there guys, welcome back. My wife likes to use these in the kitchen and they're silicone spatulas. And uh, the odd time, she ends up leaving them on the side of a pot and she melts this handle here. And uh, the other day she came to me and she said, do you think you could make some out of wood? And you know what? Brilliant. So. On today's show, we're going to be making some replacement handles for these silicone spatulas. So the first thing we need to determine with any project is the size of stock that we need. And I've determined that each one of these is going to take a piece of stock approximately 9 inches long, 1 inch wide, and 3 eighths of an inch thick. So I've gone over to the wood rack and managed to yank out this piece of walnut and you can see it's got some sapwood in it along the outside edge here and that's just fine, this will be perfect for this project. So I should get probably four, maybe five or six out of this chunk and uh, what we're going to start off with is cutting the tenon to go into the silicone part. Well we've got our stock being the 3 8 thick walnut and now we have our handle and the thing that we need is to cut this tenon that's on the top and I'm not really concerned about the width or even the length because I'm gonna make it a little proud of this anyway being a little longer but I am concerned about the thickness the thickness is important here so in measuring here I can see that the thickness of this tenon is seven thirty seconds of an inch so we're gonna go over to the table saw and we're gonna cut the tenons in our 3 8 stock in my shop really I, I sometimes have issues with fractions I mean you get into the 30 seconds and the 64's and your your head just goes for a bit of a loop so I picked up this uh, a few years back the uh, Inchmate 2000 I, I got it for dirt cheap I got it on sale and uh, this thing does like stair and tread and rake angles. It does, it does everything woodworking basically. But uh, I'm going to use this now to figure out the size of uh, our tenons or what we need to remove uh, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. So we know that uh, our stock is 3 eighths of an inch um, thick. I don't know if you can see that there. See that there are 3 eighths of an inch and I'm going to subtract our 7 sixteenths which is our tenon sorry it's crap it's 7 30 seconds wasn't it there you go see what I mean this is why I use this machine 7 30 seconds and that leaves us with 5 30 seconds left over total but we have to divide that by 2 and that of course gives us 5 sixty fourths so 5 64ths is what we will need to trim off of either side of that 3 8 board to get the correct size tenon. So we're going to move over to the table saw and use our tenon cutting jig and rip off 5 64ths off of either side of our 3 8 board. Now on last week's show I showed you guys how to set up this uh, tenon cutting jig and this week's is no different. Um, what we have basically is this is our original handle and like I said I want to go a little proud of this uh, tenon just to give us something to work with so I'm just going to mark probably about an eighth of an inch beyond the end of that you can see I'm using the shoulder of the tenon here against the edge of the board as a marking uh, or as a, a gauge and I'm just going to put a little one eighth mark just past that and I'm just going to square this up across the board and that will be of course like I pointed out last week that will be the height of our blade um, right there uh, as well now we just determined that it was 5 64 that needs to be trimmed off and and this guys is where I love these inquiry rules 5 64 I don't know about your eyes but I can't see this stuff anymore I mean, even with my glasses on it really hurts my head so what we can do here is we go down to the 64 scale 
and put it at the 564 and we just put a line and I don't know if you can see that very well but right there is a line at 564 now we're gonna take this over to the table saw and we're gonna set up the blade height and the fence for our tenoning jig so we're here at the table saw and uh, some of you who would have watched the video on this tenoning jig uh, may remember that I said make sure you put in your ripping blade and I actually have that in today so I won't have the same problems of overworking the saw like I did the last time. Uh, something else you may notice or may not depending on how observant you are is I've actually lopped off about an inch off of this back end and the reason I've done that is so that on shorter stock I can get my clamps around the back end and actually clamp lower at the bottom um, before this was sticking out just a little too far and not allowing my clamps to bite into the wood. So we've got our stock here for our spatula handle and we're just going to place it in the jig and we're going to hold it firmly against the vertical support and of course clamp it in just like that sorry there we go just like that and as I said in the initial video a second clamp never hurts the more help you have to hold this the better at this point now just like in the initial video we want to bring this up to the blade and line our blade up with our mark on the end of our stock and that should give us the proper depth but first we're going to set our blade height and in this particular case uh, we'll just raise our blade up until it reaches our line and it doesn't have to be perfect here because like I said I'm going a little a little proud of it so that believe it or not is our height that's one big tenon, but we're good to go with that. And now we'll adjust the height or the distance of our fence. And I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back and cut this tenon. got our tenons cut we're going to go ahead and rip these 3 8 boards into one inch strips well we've got all of our 10-in pieces cut into one-inch strips. Here's one here. The tenons on the end. It's looking good. But now we need to make, and yeah, you probably guessed it, a template. And what I've got here is a piece of quarter-inch MDF. And I've drawn a line here, square to the sides. This represents the shoulder of the tenon. This one-inch section in the middle will represent our one inch stock. So this is giving us something now to line up our stock on our template with. And what we're going to do is lay our original down, carefully line it up with our tenon shoulder, and then with a, a .5 pencil, going to get out enough lead that we can very carefully now 
trace around this whole assembly and then we're going to take this over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut it out And there you go. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is our mark out. So we're going to take this over the scroll saw, we're going to cut this out, and uh, we're going to see how this tenon lines up in the actual silicone spatula. And here we have our template cut. So <clears throat> at this point in time now, we want to line up our blank with our tenon on our one inch marks lining up the shoulder of our tenon and once we get it lined up we want to carefully flip it over and trace out trace out our marks on the other side so I'll trace this one out here And again, this isn't exactly rocket science, but it is one of the reasons I love templates. It really makes short work of, uh, of things when you're doing more than one of a project. And that there is now marked out. And I will now take this over to the scroll saw and I will cut that out. So we're done at the scroll saw and we've got four handles. Um, I've tried them in the silicone head and uh, we'll just show you here. It's, it's a nice tight fit. They slide in nice. They look good. I mean, they're not, not coming off. But they're kind of harsh on the hands. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quarter sheet sander and sand our flat surfaces. You don't want to go too much though because you don't want to take off that shoulder here. This shoulder is what keeps it in place. So just a light sanding with a quarter sheet and then I'm going to take a 1 8 inch round over bit in my trim router and just go around the edges of all of these pieces and uh, give it a sanding and uh, I'll come back and see you after that. And there you have it. Neat little project. Uh, we got the four of them made here, as you can see. And uh, I don't know, it went from this, yeah, yeah, to this. And I kind of like it. I think it's a big improvement with the walnut handle. It feels really good in the hand, very sturdy, and uh, no more melting them on the side of the pots. So, um, as far as finishing these goes, I'm just going to use a cutting board finish and then it can be touched up every so often. Um, <clears throat> I was going to verithane them, but there was some concern from my wife of, you know, verithane coming off in the food and whatever. So I'll do a food safe finish on these and uh, that'll be perfect. So a big thanks to my wife for the fantastic project idea. It worked out really well. I hope you're happy with your handles. And guys, Give it a try. If you've got a project idea you'd like to see, drop it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.